Welcome to the Sly Gittins Tech Simplified channel. And today I have a fabulous lady with me. Her name is Judy Dunn, and she's gonna take the time to share her experiences with us. So make sure you stay locked in to the end of this video. So Judy, will you mind talking to my audience and letting them know how you got started in your career and share a little bit about your educational path? Sure, sure. Well, thank you Sly for having me. So my, I'll tell you, first of all, that um, the path in my career has not been a straight line. It's kind of unraveled as it's gone along. So I've been in the tech industry for 20 years. It all started back in the late 90s after I finished college. And the, um, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do even going into college. And when I got out of college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, and it was at a time where the environment, the market was not that great um, and jobs were not plentiful. So I ended up waitressing for the first and second years after I finished college. And so um, it took a while for me to actually find a position. And the first position I found was with um, uh, doing contract work. And one thing led to another and years later, I was still, I was still with the company after a decade. And um, I was able to, my, that was the beginning of my journey and it just led me to so many great opportunities. Um, my background is not necessarily in the tech space. It was business administration and then I had a focus in marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, then it just, like I said, the, the path was not straight line. It just um, un unraveled as I went along. That's great. Well, that's, that's great to hear. I think the reason why I say that's great is I feel like a lot of the people I interviewed on this channel is very similar, but a lot of people I talk to every day when they get into technology is usually a different path that gets you here, right? But you got here. Knowing what you know now, how could you help the younger and less experienced Judy? Okay. Well, I bucket those into three, three items, um, three areas. First of all is uh, take more risks. Don't be afraid to fail and be assertive. So that's um, one, one bucket. The second bucket is do not burn any bridges. Mm -hmm. You never know who your next boss is going to be and you never know when your next opportunity will, will crop up and who that's from. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, attitude is everything. That's what people remember. And there's a famous quote, um, that you remember, you may not remember what someone told you, but you remember how they made you feel. And I feel that falls within the attitude section. And um, I, it's just one thing I wish I would have uh, back in the day just took more um, seriousness in that, in that piece. So those are those three things. Take more risks, don't burn bridges, and attitude is everything. Yeah, that, that's phenomenal. And that's actually a tweetable moment that I have to put out there for you. So um, the first thing I, is, a, I agree with take more risks because one thing that's helped me in my career lately is I've taken the unconventional route. Like I even gave, I, I remember creating a pitch for a role at a company that didn't even have the job. And I wrote up the job description and everything you would that's do, great. sent it out to the person and end up getting it, right? And I'm like, Good for you. you know, I was sweating when I sent it because my wife was like, man, what happens? Well, what, what gets back to my old manager, I won't have a job anymore. And it worked, right? And then I ended up, you know, increasing my salary, increasing my experience. And afterwards, I have a, a higher trajectory in salary and also experience that I found that happened with that. And also making people feel right. I think that's something that um, comes natural to me, you know, kind of my personality is, um, you know, I, I care about that person. I use a lot of empathy. That's how kind of I was brought up. And I can see that because sometimes I even see certain projects that I get. I might not be the best person in terms of the maybe the skill set but they know they can work with me they know that um the intangibles that i'm going to put in that extra time and take the time to learn the people of the project to make sure it's successful and that that definitely works that definitely works out so those are two things that um i think i really hit home when you said that so i think if anyone listening there don't be afraid especially when you're in your youth because i wish when i was in 20 and i'm 32 now that I took more risks when I was younger. Um, I'm doing that now. And, uh, you know, some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. But one thing I'm finding is you learn. And if you document, you know, what happened and uh, keep like a little bit of a journal. So what I've been doing now is I keep a daily journal. And uh, I just see, you know, what was I thinking about today? How can I have changed little things, my mindset? 
um, I wasn't focused today, right? And like even today, like I felt like I was about, I gave like 80% of focus. What if I unlocked that 20% and stayed the course the whole day? How much better? Or what else could I have got done? Or what if, no, the better question I ask myself, what if, what could I have done earlier to make sure I maximize the day today, right? <laughs> so now tonight after this call, now I got to put things in place for tomorrow to make sure I maximize the day because I got to take a certification on Friday. And <laughs> could I have spent more time during my, my time when I took a, my foot off the brakes at reviewing more questions, right? So it's just little things about that that I've been adding to the day. But let's get into the next question is, you know, what are some of your hobbies? What excites you, Judy? Yeah. Well, outside of work and uh, technology, I spend a lot of time outdoors. I love outdoor activities. I love to hike, okay. um, mountain bike, um, walk. Yeah. Uh, just I love anything outdoors. So that's where you can find me if I'm not working. <laughs> And question for you, did you grow up that way? Did you, did you do that with your parents? Like what made you get into outdoor and hiking? Yeah, I've always been an active person, athletic. I was in sports when I was younger and in college, and I just continued that. So I've always just been interested in um, keeping active, and I love the outdoors. I love nature. It just balances me. And, That's uh, amazing. So yeah. I grew up in Brooklyn. Right. So um, outdoors, I'm terrified of it. I'm going to be honest with you. When I get it, you put me in the woods, I don't know what to do. My wife, she likes to go on these trails. And I'm telling you, like, you sure ain't no, ain't no bears here. So that's like, where are the bears coming from? There's no bears in this area. You know, so like, uh, it was just pretty funny. But I remember one time when we was in Tampa, I went down to, um, it's like a trail right outside the city. And they actually had like um, cougar warnings. I'm like, hold up. They should have told me this before I got on this trail. Because A, I don't have anything to protect myself. And if I really knew that there's cougars out here, I'd have never made that walk, man. I would have walked somewhere closer to the city. Man. Yeah. But, but the funny thing that I'm laughing about now is as I got older, I kind of like my space now. I moved from the city in Brooklyn to Buffalo. And where I am, like I'm near the city, but I'm not in the city. And I got more space. And now that I bought my house, it's like, man, you know, like my neighbors are like only like 100 or 200 feet apart. I'm like, man, I, I want kind of, I could see me doing a little bit more, um, you know, more, um, it's a, a bigger land, right? And just have less neighbors. Because now I realize now it's changed now being a dad. Um, you know, my, my priorities change. So that's, that's, that's cool that you said that. It just for me, I remember in the beginning, my wife would laugh because I'm so used to, I used to joke with her, I'm like, it's one tree on my street. But if you go to Google Map right now, and I tell you where my parents live, right, it's literally one tree on my street. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like her parents didn't understand that when I she thought I was joking until when we moved to Brooklyn, they realized, like, you wasn't joking. You really had one tree on the street. I'm like, I'm telling you, man, like, this is a concrete joke. I, like, I, it was so funny, Judy, before we go on, is I was mowing my lawn, right? And I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And the first time I mowed a lawn was when I was 32 this year. So I put it on Instagram. I thought I was so excited. 11-year-old kid is like, man, that thing looks terrible, man. Do you use Azure? I'm like, man, I don't know what that is. Did you use this? I'm like, I don't know what that is. Man, I'm 11. I can do a better job than you. I'm like, you know, I tried my best, man. Like, do I get a gold star or something? No, nah, I'm just joking. But it was just funny. <laughs> man. I went off a complete tangent. But let's keep it going. So, um, Judy, would you mind sharing some of your favorite books? Yeah, well, I'll share one um, that I have found to be quite informative for me. And I, I took... This is called Strength Finder 2.0, and it is uh, an assessment tool, and it helps you as an individual under uncover your unique talents and strengths. Mm -hmm. So there is a 20 to 30 minute assessment mm -hmm. questions, and you go through, and you just answer them quickly. It's on a scale of like one to 10, and you, you just answer it, what comes to mind at first. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, it generates a report, and um, provides the top five areas of strengths based on how you answered these uh, questions. Mm -hmm. And it uncovered areas where I have a tendency to um, uh, like a natural talent. Mm -hmm. And I think earlier in my career, when you had an area where you needed help, you would focus more on that area. Mm -hmm. Well, as I learned from this um, assessment and going through this, this book is that it's actually better to focus on your strengths because then you can bring that to everything you do. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, develop areas where you, you need some help, um, but it really is, is bringing your full self um, to the table and uh, leveraging what is unique to you. 
So I felt it was a really valuable effort that I went through and um, it was about 10 years ago and I definitely recommend anyone to take this because it really helps uh, get you focused on where you have strong, unique talents. All right, sweet. So question for you, I'm gonna ask you a question. So what are the top three, your top three skills? you would say from doing that so i would say that um um, empathetic i'm a i like working with people and i also like to understand you know what's driving them what maybe challenges they're facing so empathy is is one of my top strengths Mm -hmm. Uh, secondly is a developer so in terms of the positions i've held i have um, managed uh, teams and individuals and i've really taken um interest and um it's been very enjoyable for me to see uh, the the folks that I've worked with to see them grow and develop and, and take on new challenges. So that's the second one is um, a developer. And then thirdly is harmony. I like teams. I like people. I like everyone to get along. So the whole politics has been really tough for me because I don't feel like everyone's getting along. <laughs> so it's been a very challenging time for me, but that's just happens to be one of my top strengths is liking harmony and that's in everything at work in my personal life my family is i get along i like to get along with everyone so i like that balance that's great and one more question i got for you there can you share one thing that you would like people to know about you but they they probably don't know about you if that makes sense Sure. I come from a large family with uh, seven children. I'm the second oldest, and I was the first one to finish college. So I think <laughs> having six siblings, it's, yeah. that's probably why I like Harmony. I like everyone to get along, and I don't think everyone knows that I have a big family. That's great. So let's kind of wind this down, and can you talk, tell the audience how they could get a hold of you? What's the best uh, mediums for them to contact you on? Sure, sure. The best way would be via LinkedIn. It's Judy A. Dunn. And you can just message me in the messenger or you can contact me by my personal email address, which is Judy A. Dunn at hotmail.com. All right, sweet. Well, that's all we have today. Judy and Sly Gittens are out. Peace. (laughs) Thank you, Sly.